For the first time since 2009, the Flames are headed to Morgantown. On Saturday, Liberty will meet West Virginia at 3 o'clock inside Milan Pushkar Stadium. In the previous meeting, the Mountaineers held off an upset bid by the Flames and won 33-20. But Saturday's game will be a rematch in name only. Six years later, both teams have different coaches, players, and schemes. The Flames know they're in for their biggest test to date this Saturday. Well, I think well, we've got to play our best football game that we've ever played. There's no question about that. We've got to play well early, and I think offensively, we got to make sure that we move the ball and we capitalize on the opportunities that, that presents itself. When you have an opportunity to make a big play, we got to make a big play. West Virginia right now, compared to when we played UNC last year, is a much better team. Uh, like I said, they, they from their top receiver, maybe down to their sixth receiver, are very good football players. So, you know, it, you, can't, you don't really see a, a kink or a wrinkle in their armor. Uh, they challenge you on the, on the perimeter. They're going to play man coverage a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, we just have to execute. You know, if you don't, uh, if you don't block people pr uh, properly, if you don't run the routes properly, you don't throw the right person, you know, you can get hurt. Defensively, West Virginia still features a 3-3-5 scheme, but the Mountaineers have more athleticism in their secondary, starting with safety Carl Joseph. In last week's 44-0 romp of Georgia Southern, Joseph had three interceptions in the third quarter alone. Uh, I don't I don't know so much as if he's really a shut down guy more of an opportunist you know when the ball comes to him he makes plays on it I wouldn't put him in the category as like an Ed Reed or someone who takes away half the field I, I wouldn't put him in that category but uh, definitely if the ball gets near him he's going to be able to make a play on it. he's sort of like Jacob Hagan last year they, they're really good um, they're really good tacklers um, eight and nine can tackle they come in fill the holes they, they usually they make good soft like shoot through the hips, thigh boards, twists. They've been really taught well on good tackling. And it's, I want to see how they is in coverage-wise. Under head coach Dana Holgerson, the Mountaineers have racked up 400 or more yards of offense in 36 games while scoring 40 or more points 19 times. The primary weapon for West Virginia, a young and very fast receiving core. The Flames are hoping their increased speed on defense will provide an answer. Just looking at how we was able to perform in the first game and it not being too big for all those young men that had their first uh, time starting, uh, I was pleased. But now you're going against, like I said, a BCS program, uh, definitely athletic. Uh, I think our young men are going to have to do a great job of watching film, studying uh, techniques of these uh, great players. You guys just believe in yourself, you know what I'm saying? They put on their pants like we do. so. They're, they're just men like we are. Take care of business. It's a game. If you play right and execute, then you got a shot. You got a chance to be anybody. For Flames tight end Will Johnson, Saturday will be a homecoming of sorts. Johnson transferred to Liberty from West Virginia last year. With the injury to Kendall Kuman. Johnson expects to get more reps this week. You know, I want to play well every game. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, just going back, I got no hard feelings with anyone there or anything like that. But, you know, just being from there, playing there, definitely want to perform while I'm there. There's no doubt about it. Johnson and the Flames' other veterans know what to expect on Saturday. Milan Pushkar Stadium holds 60,000 fans, and the atmosphere will be rowdy. The key will be how Liberty's younger players handle the hostile environment. The big thing that I'm going to try to um, get to them is, you know, a lot of you guys were guys that were overlooked by big-time schools like this. So when we go up and we play a team like this, you gotta, you got to play and show like you belong to play in this environment in the first place. So um, I think that's going to be the big thing for me is just getting our guys ready to go and focus so that we don't have um, you know, another lapse like last year in UNC when we had three turnovers in a row. Uh, we must play well early. Uh, we must play with three or less penalties. Uh, that, that's going to be something we must improve on from game one to game two. And then uh, tackle well. Uh, we're going to have to tackle well because uh, they got a good running back, good speed, uh, and the receivers uh, because of throwing so many different screens and different things of that nature, we have to come up and make a tackle. The Flames defense totaled five sacks and nine tackles for a loss in last week's 32-13 win over Delaware State. A large part of that had to do with the play of the defensive line. This week, it figures to be more about the Flames secondary. When asked about the new spur position, Flames defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly says, I made three bad calls last week against Delaware State, but now they don't result in touchdowns for the other team. That's the result of the Flames' newfound speed on the defensive side. Obviously a different challenge for them this week. 
On the other side for West Virginia, Dana Holgerson, their head coach, says that he wants to see improvement in blocking and tackling this week from his team. And also he wants to see his young quarterback, Skylar Howard, get better on his timing routes with his outside receivers. And a sign of respect, when asked about his All-American kicker, Josh Lambert, and what his distance and range would be on Saturday, Holgerson said, not as far as John Lunsford. In Lynchburg, for the Liberty Flame Sports Network, I'm Nick Pierce.